What's happening people, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you'll already see, this is an album reaction. I haven't done an album reaction in a while, but it is something I want to get into doing a little bit more. Be honest, I have a lot less time to film nowadays, so I think it makes a little bit more sense when I do have time to just get as much content out as possible. And if that means doing it in the form of an album reaction where it's not just like a single at a time, then by all means. And especially with the bands I listen to, a lot of them being like prog, gent, you know, bands like Mashuga. I feel like a lot of these tracks are intended to be listened to you know in the grand scheme or the grand concept of an album so sometimes it's not really doing the single justice by listening to it on its own so i think especially with bands like mashuga it's nice to do the full album like i know with catch 33 which was the album reaction i did you know people were saying that you have to do that as a full album reaction and i really enjoyed doing that and that video still gets a lot of views to this day and it's it's good it's just it's just a big form content you don't have to watch it all in one go but i know a lot of the mashuga fans um and just this you know genre of music are very passionate so they will happily sit down and watch the full 45 minute hour long video in one sitting but obviously you can you know consume it as you choose but i thought we'd do a little exercise because as you mashuga fans will probably know and i'm only really being made aware of it now because i basically have a mashuga super fan who tells me everything i need to know about reactions before i go into it so that's why sometimes i might have a little bit of an insight into you know what the track might be about or when a new single drops, I'm always kind of told what it's roughly like. So, shout out to Alex for this one. But basically, last night, he sent me a big brief on this album. And there's basically two versions. There's the original version, you know, and then there's the remastered version. Now, I'll read out exactly what Alex said in a minute. Because I think it's best if I get it from, we'll call him the expert in this case. He's definitely a Meshuggah expert. He knows absolutely, you know, every single thing about Meshuggah. He lets me know when singles are being released like weeks in advance because he just obviously keeps up to date with all the forums and stuff. I'm not that deeply invested, but obviously when the tracks come out, I really like them. So without boring you any further, I'll just read out what Alex messaged me yesterday. Now this is a bit of a, uh, you know, a briefing, but since the video is so long, I figured like, you know, it's already long form content. Who cares if we go a little, you know, a few more minutes extra in the intro. But I feel like this might also spark some conversation amongst the Mashuga fans and, you know, bring up the old which album is better because I know apparently there happens to be some back and forth between different fans deciding if the remastered version is better or if the original is better. So we'll continue on. Nothing is very groovy orientated and definitely up my alley a lot but even if the grooves are very captivating it is a challenging record because it has by far the most mind-bending riffs in their discography. Okay so that's obviously a huge introduction to this album so far so you know, we'll see how we get on. I'd say if you want to compare, Catch 33 is closest in style. The Violent Sleep of Reason has insanely fat guitars and is heavy as shit. Many cool riffs and songs, but less cohesive as an album experience than nothing I'd say. However, it is easier to digest for sure because some songs somewhat have a chorus, I guess, instead of just being odd throughout. Think of songs in the style of the album Collis, Demiurge, for example. I think the production on the, the Violent Sleep of Reason is insanely good and has some massive tunes, but I personally think nothing is more consistent as an album. Again, this is all the opinion of Alex. I do not share these opinions as of yet. I may go along with them, but it's just Alex's opinion now. It's not, you know, no one needs to hate for anyone's opinion. So just before we get into that, I'm sure you guys are all mature enough to know by now. So what Alex has suggested, which I think is a good idea, he says, I suggest you should listen to Rational Gaze and Born in Dissonance, which you've both heard. So that's obviously something I have to preface as well, is that I have heard certain tracks off this album. You can see, you know, I'm not hiding anything. They're on YouTube. So I think it's Born in Dissonance and Rational Gaze are the two tracks I've already reacted to as singles off of this album. So Alex is suggesting maybe I listen to small segments of both of them, or even just one, and you know off both albums and just see which sound is better because i know it will vary you know i have a specific setup with my you know audio setup i'm using these so it might be better for me to listen to you know the newer album because it might sound better on these headphones but we'll find that out so that's what alex is suggesting so maybe we'll do that as a little exercise before we jump into the full album alex went on to say nothing had more of an album feel more groove orientated whereas the violent sleep of reason is like a collection of singles more breakdown orientated. If I was to pick, I'd say listen to nothing because it is basically the first gent album rhythm and tuning wise. It is a huge significance, so it's obviously a massive milestone in the gent genre. And yes, it is 20 years old this year as well. So to wrap this up, I know it's a long intro. Alex says, the only thing you need to know, there are two versions, blue cover equals remaster, orange equals original mix. Fans constantly debate which one is better, 
the differences are as follows so we actually have a difference you know a technical difference as well orange is seven strings real drumming vocals unchanged organic sounding blue is eight strings programmed drums pitch shifted vocals some songs are slowed down or drawn out robotic sounding alex dan goes on to say i personally think the orange one is way more pleasant on the ears and feels more natural especially the drumming the only thing the remaster does better in my opinion are the guitars which sound massive as fuck but everything else almost sounds too polished, if that makes sense. That absolutely does make sense. I kind of get where he's going, and I'm sure I'll be able to hear that. However, again, this is a ma matter of taste, and I'd suggest, again, listen to a few seconds of Rational Gaze in both versions and decide which sounds better to you. It is just important important that you mention your choice real quick in the reaction so that nobody whines like a bitch. Now, that is not my words again. That is Alex. He's just suggesting that there might be people out there who might be a little bit passionate about this, and I understand that because Meshuggah have been abandoned for going years, and a lot of people have been listening to them for years. And they might have very strong opinions on which album is better or which album version is better because at the end of the day it's ultimately the same album i know alex has mentioned there's some changes in it slightly but ultimately it's the same okay so if i happen to choose one of the albums that you would have preferred me not to do it's a 50 50 and i'm sorry but i'm sure i'll listen to both at some point anyway let's get into the exercise i'll listen to a little bit of rational gaze of both and i'll decide with you guys and then we'll react to the entire album okay Let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, I think that's a very fair riff to start with because it just gets right into it. There's no build up. It's very, it's a very loud mix. So I think just going straight into. Oh, it's so close. Do you know what? Weirdly enough, I can't describe the difference in it from like a musical standpoint, but if I was to describe it from, say, describing something else, do you know on your iPhone when you have like the option to edit a photo, okay? And you have the structure option where it like adds more like elements to the picture. If you like structure a photo, it kind of like makes it more grainy i don't know what it is it sounds like the remastered version has a little bit more like grain to it maybe a little bit more detail maybe a little bit sharper or something maybe it's like a sharpened i, I don't know but let me maybe let's skip into like some vocal parts to see where and then we'll, we have to i have to try and differentiate it somehow How cool this song was, holy shit. All right, 50 seconds. Let's go to 50 seconds. Again. I'm gonna be honest, I can hear very little difference. And I, I do have good headphones before anyone comes out and says like, oh, you haven't got the right headphones. Like, I'm just gonna go orange, okay? I'm gonna go original because it's the original. It was how it was in first intended to be heard, okay? So I think that's a very fair way of looking at it. And also Alex did kind of just say, from his experience, he does prefer orange overall. So I'll trust his guidance because he's very been very helpful with everything else so far. So lads, I'll obviously listen to the blue version of my own time as well. Um, but I think it's just I have to start somewhere so we'll do orange first okay but anyway we finally come to a conclusion and um, I know this has been like the longest intro imaginable but at the you know we had to come to a decision it's long form content as it is what's another 10 15 minutes onto a video that's already going to be like 40 minutes long you know you guys can skip all this if you want but I know the Meshuggah fans the diehards will just watch it all because anything Meshuggah content related you know eat it all up because it's it's few and far between to be honest there's not a lot of people doing these kind of videos so Enjoy. Oh, my right ear enjoys that. My right ear is really enjoying that. When is my left ear gonna get the same experience? Oh yeah. Oh, 
Didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Just as I was about to start trying to find that rhythm, it changed. Playing zeros so complex, like I'm fucking. My mind is bending here. Guitar solo is actually something that people had mentioned in the latest video that I did yesterday um, on their latest track is that obviously we had that kind of more like that outro that had that like a new ambience to it. It was a slow outro. Like I kind of mentioned that I was a bit disappointed with the lack of a, uh, a climactic moment or it had that climactic moment but it didn't really deliver. And then a lot of people were kind of going to the fact that it was strange to kind of see that they had gone away from the guitar solo at the end because obviously it's very prominent in a lot of their music that I've listened to anyway. So, you know, it's back. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is, their music was so ahead of their time. Like the fact that this album is 20 years old, like it sounds still so relevant. <laughs> Your time. 
This has really tested my headbanging ability. Like I thought I got the hang of counting time signatures with Meshuggah, but it's quite simply hasn't been the case. But yeah, that was a, an interesting start to this album. Okay, rational gaze, let's go. This track is unbelievable. I haven't heard it in a while. Preface that again, obviously I mentioned it already, but I know some people will have skipped the intro and then been like, this dude already knows this track. I've heard it before. And it was actually the track we used to gauge, you know, for the people who have just showed up here, who just skipped the entire intro. Fair enough, it was like 10 minutes long. But this is the track that I used to gauge whether or not I would do the nothing original version or the remastered version. But this track slaps. No one's been concealed. <laughs> the Meshuggah meme pages on YouTube have ruined a lot of tracks for me. Like, all I can hear is the I like juice meme.
might be one of the most contagiously groovy songs ever like it's almost impossible if you were in any way inclined to like this kind of music to not have bang like it's it's so so hard not to do it and um, just a little preface as well i have heard this track as well the one that's coming up i was just that was why i was on my phone i was looking up to see if i've actually heard it before so i'm gonna just hire it up again Oh, fuck off. 
I have heard that already, but I actually don't think I've act really gone back and listened to that in 11 months. Like, I, I reacted to it 11 months ago, and why have I not gone back to that? Oh my, f these songs are, like, need to be the top of my gym playlist. Anyway, next one up is Closed Eye Visuals. So, I mean, I'm going to go by the name of the song and just close my eyes and see see what it brings me. But, uh, yeah, this, so this is pretty much, like, the end of the tracks that I've heard. So, uh, we're pretty much going... First reaction from here on out. Straight off the bat, this is going to be one of them time signature tracks that I just can't get my head around. I know it already. I can hear it. Like the last two, first track Stenga was like really, really awkward. And I was like, God, if I'm going to look like an idiot for the rest of like the next 15 minutes trying to react to this because I just will be completely off time. But then, like, it's the, like, the groove in Rational Gaze and Perpetual Black Second are, like, like, I must have spent 15 minutes in a row just violently headbagging. So this one's going to be, like, you know, going back to the old me, essentially. <laughs> like a much bigger appreciation and like the only reason i'm really hearing it is because i obviously started playing guitar relatively recently it's the little like halves the, 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 the down and now down like that sounds so good and now it's like a little muted segment or whatever but it just sounds unbelievable it just adds that little bit more of a groove to it oh listen now for it I feel like I haven't really done it since I've mentioned that. Let me bring it back a bit. Tragic, 
this was sorry I, I completely got lost in where i was there it's like 215 ish around about here it's the <laughs> The fact that this is 20 years ago and you actually couldn't tell the difference between Jens' vocals now and the track I reacted to yesterday which came out like two or three days ago. Like 20 years later and his vocals are still as good as they are today. Like he hasn't taken a step back. I know when vocalists, you know, Bring Me The Horizon for an example is the first, you know, example of, of uh, a lead vocalist that comes to mind with Ollie Sykes where he had to take a step back from, you know, the harsher vocals because obviously just over years wear and tear and not you know not using proper technique over time it's uh it's obviously you know destroyed his voice and he's kind of had to go towards the poppy route which i mean the day that mashuga start doing pop music is, is a dark day for us all but you know what i mean the point i'm trying to make is that yens has just stayed so consistent like it's just it's kind of cool to go back and listen to this album like a day after they've released or two days after they've released a new single because you can really hear like a 20 year difference but Ironically, it's actually not that much of a difference and he still sounds incredible and the whole band just sounds so good. If there's one thing I've learned from Catch 33, it's that Yen's talking in a track when he's just casually talking to me, it means I'm about to get my head blown off. We all know what happened after I listened to Dehumanization.
is so so like a tarja cat. That is so haunting. They completely got me there. I thought we were... This reminded me of a combination of Lethargica and Dehumanization, the build-ups of both of the drops. But I figured, like, they've just mixed them two and not given us a drop. But they did, and it scared the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> that's what I mean, boy. Look, I'm going to pause this real quick because I'm, I'm talking while it's playing. Um, that is really... The point I wanted to make in yesterday's video about, um, well, it won't be yesterday by the time this is out, but it was yesterday I recorded it, like the shortening fuse. I just felt like that was a little bit underwhelming because we had like these kind of atmospheric moments in the track where it almost felt like it was the chord progression was leading towards a breakdown. Now, I know every single track doesn't have to have a breakdown, and that's kind of why I might st take a step back from doing the singles, you know, especially with bands like Meshuggah until the full album's released because Meshuggah, I don't really think, have a very f single friendly style if that i think that's fair enough to say because their music sounds so much better when compiled in an album like this it just blends into each other and it just it just makes more sense in the context of the entire album so that's what i mean by like i know granted like the shortening fuse might make sense leading into another track after it and we'll find that out when the new album drops this is kind of what i meant from a single standpoint like if if like the shortening fuse was a single which it was i feel like it almost needs to have that moment because there's no context until the full album comes out so Closed Eye Visuals was kind of the same. It felt the same, but this delivered. It scared the shit out of me. I didn't think we were going to get it, but it did deliver in the end. So, yeah. Also, I don't know if there's a bit of a delay between the album, the tracks. No, there isn't. There we go. Still lies the lane you've been trying It's a 
Ashes made in the wolf's rhythm Surroundings breeze the surface of your skin Progress is static, life as sight Eyes in my way, great collide Let me let me pause it before we get into this because this album is absolutely relentless. I'm not getting a second to actually pause it or even to to just like a natural break, you know, where there might be some like, you know, quieter moments where I can actually just speak without the music overpowering me. Um but that last track I would have to say is the weakest on the album so far. But again, take that with a pinch of salt because I don't think that really means much because every single track has been very, very good. So when I say the weakest, I still liked it. It's just if I had to choose, you know, if I had to tear them from, you know, start to finish, I'd say that one probably had the less the least impact on me. But um yeah. I mean, Organic Shadows, I don't actually know where we are in the full context of the album. Let me just double check. So, oh, I have, I've heard Straws pulled at random as well. So, we know, obviously, what that track's like. Well, I can't really remember. It's been a while since I listened to it. But we'll uh, we'll continue on. But, yeah, this is just non-stop, non-stop riffs from start to finish. The fly of sense of sanity Cracking up the same story From my reality The motion of the
A bit indifferent to that one um, felt like a bit of a filler but again I'll listen to it again at some other points um, in context and see what I feel but it's just going to be hard to top a lot of these tracks that I've already heard but that one just felt like one of the weaker tracks on the album if I'm being honest and it would probably represent the majority considering I never have even heard of this track so no one ever recommends it a little bit of a filler track in my opinion still sounds incredible like very very good but uh, we got straws pulled around them up next so it's been a while since I've heard this, so we're going to listen to it again. It's definitely hard to get more right. Oh! 
Guitar is just like boom, 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 boom. Like even that is throwing me off. Like I'm just paying attention to the, you know, how often that chops and changes. And it's only this kind of now I pay more attention to this just with my own experience of actually playing. It's just it's just naturally I'm, I'm copping onto that a little bit more because I'm, I'm imagining this like in tab form. I'm like if I was going to try and play this, and I'm just like yeah, they're just making this so. They're so awkward to play. Like on paper, that would probably look straightforward enough, like doom, doom. But when you're trying to keep up with the rest of the instrumentation that's going on, it's just, it's a lot. Like even. Yeah. I don't really remember listening to that track. I know I definitely have listened to it, but I don't. I just there was nothing really that stood out to me. Like, oh yeah, that's that's this track. You know what I mean? We got spasm. Oh wow! Well. What the fuck? They're using a the fifteen string guitar for this. Why is it so fucking tuned down? Oh. Man. 
sure that has to be the base. Is there like do Mishuki even use bases at this point of their career? That's so fucking toned down. It's ridiculous. If that's a guitar, like that has to be a seventy-eight string guitar. is insane listen to the amount that's going on in this right now listen Contortion assault, light bulb language translated into fits. Codes and tandem focus I can't grasp. Focus lost as I arrive into which random beats of blind. I have never, never heard Jens ever sound like this. Like he's only ever sounded the same. Like he's never varied from his vocal style he sounds like a fucking like an alien or some shit i like it though i don't know where it's gonna go Stravoscopic. Contortion assault, light bulb language translated into fits. Codes and tandem flickers I can't grasp. Focus lost as I arrive into which random beats of blinding shock waves. Erratic sunset twist my eyes. Flashes pounding at my thoughts. As the intrinsic pains multiply, my soul tissue twined with every violent lash. By an umbrella and to shine Immobilized By the increasing pains The procreating agonies of system breakdown Frequency, body oscillation oh. Undeciphered motions pass through my flesh Bodily reverberation induced A corporeal system I don't know where this is going But I feel like it's about to send me into orbit Lost in its waves Bleach into their existence By tremulous epileptic strokes Blasts of irregular pulse radiation Triggering the process of mind and body control All sick Lost to their control A sentence in flashes sold in ties by their calls, insane, divine. Torn, undone, dissolved. By incandescent, God condemned. Burned to their mock and my soul. My inverted shadow combined Shattered and torn apart. 
These guys are musical geniuses. Like, there is no other way to describe it. What am I listening to? The... I, I can't believe what I'm... This is my sugar track. I haven't heard anything remotely close to this. And it's... Sounds like... It's like my favourite sound already. Like, this sounds unbelievable. Why haven't they experimented more with this kind of style before? Like, I've done quite a few sugar tracks at this point. And this is the first time I've experienced anything remotely close to this vocal style from Jens. And my god, I've never heard something tuned down as heavily as they've got it here. Like, it's so heavy. Like, it's just, like, it doesn't even sound like a guitar at this point. It just sounds like one continuous bass line. Fuck. A wordless thing, a thingless word. Life for malformation. Listen to that tone. These guys are absolute innovators. Like, I know everyone says that they created the gen sound and, like, for this to be 20 years old and still be this good.
Look, I don't know what the fuck a nebulous is, but if well, I'd imagine this is what a nebulous would sound like. They tricked me. That was a hard one. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a while since we got. Uh, okay, that's gonna get clipped. That was a hard one. But I thought we were gonna get absolutely pummeled into the earth there. Maybe we did, and I just didn't really realize it. But this is the last track on the album, lads. Ah, we'll get some mellow. Surely they'll just mellow it out now. Just make up for. The lack of brain cells I have after trying to figure out those time signatures in some of them tracks. Now granted, a lot of them were quite like groovy, like Alex did say in his intro, or his kind of explanation of the album. But there was a few in there that were quite mind-blowing. But uh, yeah, this album, very, very good. Let's uh, interested to see how they go about outro on it. Do they blow my brains out? And just finish me off for good, or do they, you know, let up a little bit? Everyone, make sure they drop a like on this video if you have not already, it would be much appreciated. Make sure you're soaked as well. Also much appreciated. We're going to be covering as much Meshuggah as possible. Uh, leading up to the new album release. And then obviously when the album drops as well. We'll do the full album reaction. So make sure you're up for that.
That might be the most Mashuga outro I have ever heard. Zeros. Zero. 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 What a way to end, end an album. That reminds me of, like, I mean, granted, it's not much of a track. It's quite literally just an atmospheric track to kind of essentially remind you of what you've just experienced. If I had to, like, that just reminds me. You know what I mean? Like, certain tracks kind of paint a picture in your head of, like, what, you know, the scene of, say, like, a movie, for example. That just, I can imagine being in hell and, like, to get, or, like, just outside hell. If just, I'm just imagining this kind of dark, gloomy fire pit essentially like what you describe as hell or the stereotypical view of what hell would be and just the gates opening and that boom as it slowly creeps open that is the imagery that that kind of track creates for me so whether or not that's what they had in mind but that's what it did for me and the fact that it's called obsidian as well like isn't obsidian like some rock that's found like deep in the core of the earth or some shit i don't know i played minecraft years ago and i'm pretty sure that's what it was so maybe minecraft got it wrong if they did blame minecraft anyway lads that was, uh, <laughs> my head hurts. Like, that was an experience and a half. That's so much metal to consume in the space of an hour. Um, but, main points. Jens Kidman, his vocals haven't changed, which is, a te like, granted, I understand that, like, drumming and guitar work and everything, you know, naturally, over time, as you get older, it's you're going to slow down. Like, with anything, I'm not going to call it a sport, but you know what I mean? Like, in sport, people slow down in music you know musicians obviously they get more experienced over time but over time muscle memory and stuff you know reaction time slows down so it goes without saying the rest of the band still sound as good but i think the most impressive is just yens because obviously you know wear and tear over time you know your vocal your vocal limit probably has much less of a lifespan than someone's ability to play the guitar or play the drums now again i don't want to take away from the rest of the band members but that's just my personal main thoughts on it is that like you know i've seen vocalists lose their voice over time and have to change their style completely whereas jens quite clearly hasn't this is like this came out in 2002 2022 we still have a living proof that he can still you know do these screams and he can be as consistent with his vocals without having to change the style because let's be honest i don't think mishuga are much without that vocal style like you can't expect like mishuga to turn around and you know that's the style that they're known for and like they're so extreme like, you can't expect the fans to take to that lightly, you know, whereas if Yen started coming out and, you know, singing. Now, granted, he's done so much for the genre and the band has done so much for the genre that I'm sure people would just get on board with whatever they try and do. You know, if it was genuinely a situation where his voice was fucked and he had to change change style, you know, I'm sure they'd find some way. Because they're so good, like, you know, they're such good musicians, they'd find a way to make something good. But, you know what I mean? I think that's the most impressive part. Two, overall, as an album, it sounds so you know way ahead of its time like it doesn't sound like something that was created 20 years ago like you know i do like catchy choruses and stuff like that but mishuga just hits different i don't know what it is it's like the one band that i'll just tolerate not really having any melody to it i know there is melodic aspects to it but a lot of the time it just balls to the wall like from the very get-go on this album so heavy like relentlessly heavy barely got a chance to even breathe and it's the one band that i'll just accept that for because that's just who they are finally i'd like to say a huge thank you to alex for obviously providing me with not only that information but all the information that i've received over the last few months and if not over a year with you know my sugar releases and all that kind of thing i try and stay on top of things so i appreciate you alex appreciate you man because i know he'll be the, he'll be really excited to see this coming out as well as well as a lot of people i'd imagine so uh guys as always i know you guys do enjoy the album reactions and you, you all seem to show me a lot of support when i do them so look i want to please you guys i love doing them the album reactions are they're tiring i'm not gonna lie like sitting here with the ring light on you and getting absolutely blasted by my sugar for an hour seems very easy i know I'm very privileged, you know, like it's not something that I should be, you know, complaining about and I'm not complaining about it by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm just trying to stress, I'm, t I'm actually tired, like I'm genuinely like drained after that. The light doesn't help and obviously I'm trying to focus in a lot more, like if I was listening to this just by myself and I tried to make it as genuine to like if I was just sitting here by myself, listening to something for the first time, but obviously I'm a little bit, maybe a little bit more animated as well, but it's still as genuine as it comes and, you know, I have to kind of almost, like if I was sitting here by myself, I wouldn't feel the need to, you know, try and visually express my thoughts because it would just be me but if i'm like here in a certain part of a riff i obviously want to you know experience that moment with you guys as well because i know that's the whole point of these reaction videos is when you notice something to kind of express it visually that you're here in that moment that's really you know maybe technical or just really different so 
it is exhausting in that sense so all i do ask is that you do sh show support on the videos i don't get paid for these videos obviously if there's a sponsor involved then by all means i'll get paid i'm not going to deny that but very rarely is there a sponsor involved and the revenue all goes to the band so lads all i ask drop a like in the video drop a comment let me know what your favorite part of it was the interaction is all i want from these videos guys it's absolutely incredible to be chatting to you guys all around the world like alex is one of the guys and lane as well myself alex and lane have been very close over the last few months and we obviously share different ideas about music and like Meshuggah has been something that I've really gotten into as a band and Alex is very passionate about Meshuggah and that's why I've gotten a lot of this information and just you know it just helps me and then it allows me to help you know you guys because then you guys get you know a bit of entertainment not that I'm really teaching you anything but you know you guys get the you know the content out of it so guys all I ask please drop a like let me know which album we should do next I know the new Meshuggah album comes out on the first of April so we have a little bit of time not too much time but we might be able to fit in you know one or two more albums and just get as up to date as possible because it's always nice to have reference you know to know when they're paying homage to older albums now I have another album like under my belt where I can kind of go like you know when the new album comes out when I'm listening to it I'm like oh that's a direct throwback to you know the older albums like that's you know remember that track on nothing where you know they did this and that's kind of like almost like a throwback to that so yeah, lads, what can I say? You see my reaction. I don't really need to speak about my feelings on the album. Obviously, I'll give it a few more spins. I'll listen to the other version as well, the remastered version. See if I notice any differences myself, but I'd imagine they're going to be much the same. That sounds incredible. I'm not like coming out that disappointed and being like, oh, I wish I did the remastered version. So yeah, lads, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm signing out. Look after yourselves. Cheers.